I've come up here to some dear friends of ours place, Thomas Nursery and Feed. They're right up here in Farmerville. They've been here for years and years and years. And y'all see they sell these kind of buildings. Y'all, this is where my canning kitchen came from. Yes, it is. And it had a great price on it. But they sell so much, I cannot begin to show y'all everything. This is the front of the store. They are a plant nursery, and they have anything and everything and I'm excited because Paula my sweet friend Paula is gonna let us pick some prickly pears and make some jelly from them and she's so sweet for that yes she is it goes way down in there y'all see those greenhouses way down in there let me zoom in I know Jason his mom and daddy started this business and he worked in those since he's been a young boy. Working, working when most boys was off playing and having good times. Uh, you can literally shop all your Christmas needs right here at the store. Look at these pretty succulents. I have shopped all my Christmas gifts right here at the store. Yes, I have. Y'all see they've got all of these mums. Look how humongous these things are just huge just tons and tons of them all right guys let's go walking in hey 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 ryan how are y'all <laughs> i came to pick those prickly pears down there and make jelly i'm gonna come back and share with y'all i know i know did you did you Will you send that to, will you, yeah, yeah, send that to me, I love that, I'll use that on my, on my video, because I bet that's so pretty with the sun coming up over it, <laughs> okay, let me show y'all, I'll get it from you later, girl, and they sell jelly in here, they sell honey in here, this is the honey that I get, that I do some videos with y'all, because it's the local Stow Creek Farms, We've got beef in here for sale. Here's the part, another Christmas thing. Oh, let me not pass this up. All this jewelry. Jewelry, such pretty pieces. Can y'all see those? Very pretty pieces. All this Carhartt. I bought John's farm clothes here for years and years and years. John needs a new wallet so badly. And he would adore this flag one. Yes, he would. That's what he's getting right there. I got to start a stack. Oh, we've got canning jars. I might have to get a few of those. You know how I'm always showing you these in the canning kitchen. They've got them here. Yes, I might have to get some jars. Hey, guys. I got all of those jars they had for our jelly. So, it's going to be so, so, so cute. They're half pints. Perfect. Oh. Y'all know I got John that new wallet, that flag wallet. He'll love that. My gumbo sign and my cast iron trivet. And yes, one had to come home with us. That's going to go so cute in the rocks at the house. Yes, it is. All right. Let's go do what we came here for. Let's get those prickly pears. Hey guys. Can y'all see me? I think you can. Y'all see this beautiful cactus? Just gorgeous. Would y'all look at this bucket of prickly pears we picked? 
we have got some work to do, don't we? This is a five gallon bucket, so y'all come on. Come on, get out of the heat. These are actually called barb figs too, and I love that because I know what a fig is really well, don't y'all? But pick them up by each end like that. Can y'all see what I'm doing? And I'll hold it like that from each end and take my cloth. You can use a, a, a paper towel if you want to. So then you can throw it away with all the little pricklies in it and just scrub them like that around the side and twist them around. So then you're on both ends where you won't get poked so much. Um, honestly, dealing with these you're going to get poked and you're going to get them stuck in you and you're going to have to get some tweezers to your fingers but we really don't mind too much do we we're going to love who we give this to so it'll make it all worth it again i'm picking them up by each end like that just like that and then I'm scrubbing and just twisting it around like that. Guys, wasn't that sweet of Paula and Jason to let me get all these prickly pears? I think so too. And that's why I'm going to share with them. Yes, I am. I'm also going to save some juice because you can make drinks out of this. You can make refreshing drinks. It's so very good for you. Y'all know fruit. If it's dark in color, it is packed full of vitamins and minerals, right? I know. And they are pear-shaped, but I tell you, when you cut into them, they do remind you of a fig, don't they? They truly do remind you of a fig. So I can see why they're called barb figs, too. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was very sweet of them to let me get these. I'm so appreciative. I've got two big old pots over here. Y'all see, I'm filling them up. Yes, I am. Got a system of going. We're going to just cover them with water and bring them to a boil just like we do every jelly we ever do. Some people actually puree the whole fruit in the food processor and then strain out the seeds and the pulp that way to get the juice. So, However you are accustomed to doing your juice is how you do it. But y'all know how we do it together. Oh, he was nice and ripe. Oh, so pretty. I'm going to see if my chickens want all these little cut off pieces with these seeds in it. Oh my goodness. They're probably going to love that. They just love any seed. They really do. We've got some kind of crazy varmint around here, guys. It, well, I say crazy varmint, and y'all are like, what do you mean, Amy? I know. But, um, Benny, our little white dog, well, we let both of them out the other night. I always do at about 10 o'clock at night, right before we get in the bed. John and I will, like, go brush our teeth, and then I'll let them in, and then we all go to bed. Well, I let them out. And John and I went to the kitchen. I was finishing loading the dishwasher with our glasses. And we were about to let them back in. And all of a sudden, I heard Benny screaming like bloody murder. Seriously. And I broke and ran. And so did John. We were trying to get out that side door. All I could figure is something had gotten a hold of him. And I was thinking maybe like a rattlesnake, because it's rattlesnake time around here. And when I, op when I snatched open that door, it was just darkness out there off the porch. And just the porch light was shining, you know, on just the porch. And I screamed real loud, like, whatever it is, if it's something, just try to scare it away. He's still not quite as ripe. Y'all see, but I'm not going to throw him away. I'm going to put him in that pot. But he's still got a little green on him. But he's okay. He'll be alright. And <laughs> y'all want me to get back to that story, right? Well, I opened the door. And John's right on my heels, too. Because I'm thinking we've got a half a second to try to get out there. 
and I screamed real loud like to try to scare whatever it was and apparently I did because Benny and Jax within just a millisecond ran through the porch light and passed our legs and feet right into the house and I turned back and I looked at Benny and Jax and Benny was shaking and shivering and he had two bloody tooth marks on his back and two bloody ones on his belly like canine tooth marks and the top ones were punctured in pretty well whatever it was had a real good bite on him I, Benny was screaming and we know he had to be wiggling when he was screaming and we're thinking maybe when we opened the door and I screamed I like startled it possibly and we thought coyote at first you know and I thought wow they're coming right up in the yard and because uh, they're inside a uh, wireless electrical fence you know and they know their boundaries but you know things can still come in and get them but what I'm saying is they're not going way off to the edge of the woods they're right there around the house and so of course I grabbed Benny up made sure he was okay and I had to start him on antibiotics and give him a medicated shampoo bath and for days he was sore on his back he couldn't even touch him bless his heart so we said well we're gonna have to walk them out like subdivision dogs you know on a leash and let them use the bathroom but our, my dogs aren't accustomed to a leash so they just stand there so we said well, we'll just walk out and watch them and take a bright light of course John takes a gun too <laughs> and so what happens two nights later after that and I like I say I've got a Benny on antibiotics and he's good and he's okay it was a miracle though really he should have we should have never seen him again probably just heard him scream and that would have been it but I'm gonna save these for the picture but anyway um Benny uh, he got he got sick two nights later he does that often he well I say sick he wanted up to go to the bathroom about four o'clock in the morning so his stomach must have been a little upset because he only does that when it is and like y'all know I cook special food you know and he's on sensitive stomach he's just a tiny little dog so um and it may have been the antibiotics you know I don't know but anyway so two nights later he gets me up at four o'clock in the morning he gets up in the bed and comes over there and it wakes me up of course it doesn't wake John up you know most men when I raise the babies they'd be screaming and you know the men don't hear it or that's the way it was with me <laughs> now my sons they'll get up with their babies but anyway guys I'm gonna get y'all over here and start filling up we've got two big old pots y'all see that this one's a big big pot so I'm going to put a little bit more of this because I just kind of was splitting it at the time and this big old pot I'm doing it just cover them with water okay but anyway two nights later when Benny got me up at four o'clock in the morning he went outside well you know that's that was our routine is at night you let him outside with a bright light so I let he want to go out the back door and we had been letting him out the front door so or the side porch door and it's right on the corner of our front porch so I did I'm gonna show y'all exactly what I'm talking about see how I've just covered them basically I'm just getting some water in there because I want to get a real concentrated juice y'all know what I'm talking about don't you I know you do so anyway I let Benny out the back door and I ran around to that front door and I opened up that front door real hard and I said rah you know just to make no I screamed Benny Benny you know because I'm just trying to scare anything out there so I'm just out there I'm aren't you glad I don't have neighbors <laughs> right and it's four o'clock in the morning now and when I did that I startled something right around the corner of the house I'm out the side door and the corner of the house is right there goes onto our front porch I startled it and it ran into the side of the house I heard the siding on the house crunch 
And of course, then that scares me half to death. So, all right, guys, I'm getting these just covered same way. So I take off. I'm going to turn the fires on, okay? I take off back in the door real quick just out of uh, reflex, you know, like, oh, my goodness, something was right there. Well, I, um, then I realized, okay, it didn't, it didn't come past me. It went on back off the front porch. Okay, okay, you know, let me get back out there with Benny. And I'm thinking, what in the world would that be? So, I step around the front porch and I see nothing and we've got a front porch swing and it's not even swinging. But something had waylaid the house. And just out of, I'm thinking the whole time, I'm not going to see what it is, but I'm just going to look out in the yard and it's really like dark out there. It's just the porch lights that are dimly shining out into the yard. And we have a live oak tree straight out in front of the house. And I looked out that way and lo and behold, there stood an animal that was waist high, about 34 inches high basically. And it was furry, real furry all over and, and dark colored like the live oak looked black. And then it stood right in front of that live oak and it stopped broadside and it just looked at me. And then it took on off down toward our pond. And I was like, oh my goodness, I am seeing what it was. And I told John and I told my son Tyler the next morning. Um, Y'all see what goes on in John's sleeping. <laughs> I told him one time he's, never, he's not going to see me or the dog's door's going to be wide open. <laughs> and he's just asleep and has no idea this stuff that goes on in the night. And so... um. I told them, and they both said, you're almost describing a wolf as furry as it is. And I said, I know. And I know that the game reserve we had heard several years back had let out some wolves around here. We live right up against a game reserve. So um, we get a lot of experimental type animals. We've had beavers dumped off, and then the beavers have flooded our property like 40 acres. And we had to trap beaver, beavers. and. Um, so, you know, but anyway, whatever. Uh, so, um, John got to telling one of the guys, Mr. Roger, he's driving that log truck out here, hauling logs off our property. He's also our neighbor down the road, and he hunts behind us on some of this game reserve property. And two nights later, John was talking to him on the phone, and I was cooking supper, and he had him on speaker, and he said, Mr. Roger... He started telling me about um, a little dog that got bit and what I had seen in the dark, you know. And I was so thankful he talked to Mr. Roger because, you know, when you see something by yourself and you're telling somebody, you almost think they don't believe you. You know, they think you're nuts, you know. And, and John said he believed me and my son, John Tyler, believed me. He was like, Mama, we're going to figure out how tall it was. And that's when he walked out there and said, Tell me when you think it's getting this tall. So that's how we figured out it was about 34 inches high. It's back. And so Mr. Roger got to telling John, John, there are two black gray wolves right behind y'all's house, right where they hunt. They hunt right at the edge of our pasture in some leased um, hunting property. And he said they had gotten them on uh, deer cameras. And you tend to think, well, they're wild and they're afraid, but they were coming right up in our yard. And even more, Roger said, he and his grandson, now Mr. Roger's six something foot tall. His grandson, same thing, six foot something tall. They're big guys. They were out planting in that deer, in their deer lanes and getting ready for hunting season. It had no guns on them. And those two gray wolves walked up on them and began growling and snarling at Mr. Roger and his grandson and there they stood you know with no guns and so they began to say rah rah you know and try to look bigger and scare them off and the the wolves finally just kind of walked away and of course then they went and got you know out out of there and were armed to go back down in there but then that told me I will walk out in the pitch dark, black, four o'clock in the morning, and I'm much smaller than they are, and 
I, the, it's not daylight. This was daylight when that happened to them. Isn't that something? So now that scares me. So now I don't just meander around on the sidewalk like, oh, well, now I'm just standing there like, baby, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, and I'm screaming. <laughs> but that really happened. Isn't that crazy? I know. So um, anyway, I was glad Roger and them had gotten it on camera and actually had some interaction with them and nobody got hurt. Just so then it was confirmed what I was seeing and what actually tried to get Benny. So now we walk them out like little princess dogs, you know. We've got lights and um, that's just crazy. Isn't that crazy? I know. I know. I'm going to hush. I'm going to hush my story. <laughs> Okay, y'all, it's been about 15 or 20 minutes. Y'all see how they've softened and lightened in color? They are ready. They are ready for me to just turn off and let them steep in juice. That's exactly what I'm doing. I've turned my fire off and I'm placing the lid on all of them. And I'm going to let these steep. You can let them steep anywhere two to four hours. To, before I juice them off, I like to get real concentrated and all I can out of there. Or I'll let it steep overnight. Y'all know I'm real good at that, too. And I think I'm going to do that because I've got to get up in the house and cook John and me some supper. So I believe I am going to just let these steep overnight. And I'll see y'all tomorrow. Well, it's the next day already. That was fast, wasn't it? And these are nice and cooled down. And this is what I love to do. A lot of times I don't have that kind of time. I've got a tea pitcher I'm going to put my juice in. Um, let me get y'all a little further down here. Let's see here. Come on down. Come on down. There we go. And I've got me a small container here with a strainer. And we're going to put cheesecloth in there. Y'all know I always do that by now, don't you? And start straining this juice. And as I get this little container filled, then I'll start putting it in my tea pitcher as well. And I might have to get two tea pitchers. You never know, right? Let's see. Something I like to use, and a lot of you already know that by now, is a cheesecloth. And this is called Tool Best. And said I've been in the grocery stores and the stores, and I'm always running around searching for it. So I just order it, to be honest with you. And I'm running low so i'm leaving that out to remind me to order some more and because i don't um i don't reuse my cheesecloth especially these you know with the little pricklies and stuff and i just i don't want it to have something in it that doesn't need to be in it when i get through so i just chunk it but i bet you could wash it i'm getting this out with y'all and I'm going to make sure I have plenty. Last time I cut a little short when we made that muscadine jelly. And it was trying to spill out. And I do not want that happening. Happening. Here. Let's see here. There we go. We'll have us a nice big old piece. You know what? That's not enough left over. So I'm going to leave it just that size. That's what I was wondering. Get y'all down here. So y'all can see this pretty juice. There we are. And oh yeah, I almost forgot, didn't I? I, know, I like to rinse this as well. Just in case it might have a little lint on it or something. When I cut it, you know it gets little lint pieces on that cut edge. So I always rinse it pretty good like this. Rinse it out just like that. And then I'll squeeze it really, really good like that. Y'all, today here in Louisiana, it's teasing us for the fall and it's turned off really cool. And oh, it feels like what I think heaven feels like every day. <laughs> I'm like, it must feel like this in heaven. It just is heavenly feeling. Okay, now there we go. Y'all see that gorgeous, gorgeous color. While these were cooking, they almost had a little bit of a fig smell. I know I told you they also call them a barb fig. I'll put some in there. That was most of the juice, but you know I'm going to squeeze. And I say this every time because 
if you read the books about gelling, it will say do not squeeze your cheesecloth with your whatever in it you're juicing because you might make cloudy jelly. Y'all have seen my jellies enough to know. And I've been making jellies for 20 some odd years now and I've never had a cloudy jelly. So I squeeze it. You see all that juice I be wasting? Uh-uh. No, no, no. So I'm squeezing away. I love it when I let it cool overnight too because I can really get in here and squeeze like this. Unlike when it's really hot, you you struggle. Let me grab my garbage bowl. My Rachel Ray garbage bowl right there. I imagine these these chickens will get some more of this, but I fed them a lot of those seeds yesterday. <laughs> I might make them sick, right? Now, something that's very important is keep your cheesecloth in the same direction. You see, like, don't flip it the other way because then you're going to get your seeds and any little things you don't want in there. So make sure you're pouring it through the same direction each time. I know y'all get that. I know you do. Isn't that beautiful, guys? Beautiful. Guys, I thought this stuff is so good for you. Um... The prickly pear juice it's great to make little frozen ice cubes and put them in your smoothies all year round it's great to make you a little drink right now to drink on it's just good and I can use it in lots of desserts and things and sauces even so just kind of think outside the box if you get a hold to some um, Jelly, of course, is going to be our biggest thing we're going to make. But I want to make a little drink with y'all right now. Here we go. I've got my little jar of some ice. And I've got a little slice of lime. A little wedge of lime. I use lime all the time. I drink that in my water that I drink. And I have some agave in the raw nectar and it's made from the blue agave plant hello i know i went all over the place it's made from the blue agave plant and it's actually made in brooklyn isn't that cool i know i know so i'm giving brooklyn a shout out but that's what i got and it's organic and i'm going to put about a teaspoon of that in there for my sweetener we're going to stick with the theme <laughs> right i know it so we'll put us a little about a teaspoon for our sweetener if you've never tried agave, it's very good. Very good. All right, guys, and put some of this juice in here. Isn't that beautiful? And then I have some mineral, mineral water. I drink this all the time, too. And I like its little carbonation. Put that in there. And I need a stirrer. I'm real official down here with my dinner knife for my stirrer. And let's taste this. Doesn't that look good? I think so too. Here it is, y'all. I had to take it outside and take a picture first. <laughs> I know I'm a silly willy. Let me stir it one more time and we'll taste it, okay? Now, I've never tasted this before, so I'm going to do that with y'all. It sure looks pretty, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, now that it's cooked, when it was raw, it had a little bit of a watermelon flavor. Now, it has a little bit of a fig flavor. Isn't that crazy? Mm. That's very good. Very good. I only put a teaspoon. You could put more of the sweetener in it, though. You could put white sugar if you want to. I just thought I'd stick with the little thing there. <laughs> okay, let's make jelly. Minutes. Ten minutes these need to sterilize in some mildly boiling water. Alright, we've got us a nice clean pot washed out. Got a little bit of water left in it. Let me get that out, guys. Into that, I'm going to put three cups of our prickly pear juice. Our beautiful juice. Three of those. 
one, two, three, and four and a half cups of white granulated sugar going in. And into that, I know y'all can't really see the pot, can you? I know. Into that, I am going to put one quarter cup of lemon juice. There we go. Y'all know I love to use fresh lemon, but this is supposed to have the exact right acidity. Probably just an advertisement for the, the bottled stuff, right? <laughs> oh well. So I use that for my jelly making. We're going to stir this up and I'm going to get this boiling and get back on here with you. Y'all see how this has come to a boil and I cannot stir it down. It's been doing that for a couple of minutes. So we know our sugar is good and dissolved in there. And I'm going to add one package of this liquid pectin. You can use the powdered pectin. I've used both, okay? And I love them both. And it's about a, it's a three ounce package is what it is. I'm gonna snip the top over here so I won't get that into our jelly. We don't want that, do we? And then I just simply roll it down in there, just like that. And I'm gonna return this to a boil. And y'all know me, I don't watch for time more than I do that freezer test and we're gonna do that freezer test together and make sure this is gonna gel before we put it in our jars okay y'all let's check out this jelly because we got a lot more to make don't we oh my goodness yes y'all see how it gelled right up on that spoon uh-huh can you imagine that spread on a piece of toast I know now I want to taste this and I'll let y'all know best I can <laughs> mm, very good it's got a little bit of a figgy flavor I tell you what it reminds me of a little is the purple hull jelly I made it really does truly <laughs> and Thomas nursery when I was out there and got my jars they had lots of these sets of canning canning supplies you get and you use that to get your hot jar out of that hot water y'all see it's nice and hot your large mouthed funnel and then these ladles are fabulous and it's got a little hook to hang on there and a lot of times my pint jars I can about use a whole scoop so we'll see and that funnel helps your jars stay clean. Oh, isn't that a beautiful little color? <laughs> it's a delicate little color. I love it. I love it. You need about a quarter inch headspace in there. Just so your lid will have room to seal and then to stay sealed. Put this over here so I won't get everything sticky and the canning supplies will come with this little measure right here and it'll show you a quarter inch right there it'll show you have it on there once you've done it a while you just don't even use that thing anymore you just really don't okay and then also you need one of these little handy dandy things it's got a magnet on the end and this will fish out your your lids that are hot 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 there and get them on there and also fish out one of your little twist tops something I didn't do real quick um, is you must make sure this is clean even though you use that funnel make sure it's really clean and some something else you can use is some white vinegar and then you'll know for sure just around the top just like that Woo, that's hot okay now now And there you have it. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> so pretty. Y'all want to see the sun shining through it? Let's see. There we go. So pretty. 
Okay, guys. I'm going to get busy and I'll get back on here with y'all. I want to tell y'all, if you have a second pot that you're already heating, I do that when I'm making a whole lot of jelly. I get a couple of pots going. And you have just a little bit left in your first pot after you had put it all in your jars. You do not have to throw that away. No, you sure do not. You can just put it right on over in there. I have for years and it works just fine. Another thing you can do with your prickled pear juice is freeze it in little ice trays. Let me put y'all down here and show y'all what I'm up to. I am going to empty them in here just like that. And I can either use it in a couple of ways, I can drop it into some sparkling mineral water, just like that. Mm -hmm. Or, y'all know what I'm going to do. This is packed so full of vitamins. I'm going to put those in a freezer Ziploc. And these can go in smoothies with us. Sure can. Just like that. We got to hurry. Hurry fast before they melt. Get our other tray. We can have fresh prickle pear juice with all its nutrients anytime during the winter. And that is fabulous. That's fabulous, isn't it? Yes, it is. One little cube didn't want to come out there. Yet. All right, guys, y'all get in here in a hurry. Hurry, hurry. Everybody's got to stay good and cold. There we go. We've got wintertime treats, don't we? <laughs> here is what all we had. Y'all saw the ice cubes to make smoothies during the winter. I even uh, jarred some juice for us just in case you get in the winter and say, Oh, I wish I had some of that juice left for this little dessert or this sauce. I saw a dessert called... Uh, prickly pear lemon bars and they look so good and beautiful color so I did that if you're gonna do this I did water bathe these because it's just the juice and I put a, tea, a tablespoon of lemon juice in there also so it had plenty of acidity to seal and stay sealed for us and of course I labeled it I did two pints of that I did 19 half pints of our jelly isn't it beautiful it looks like sunshine i know i know it'll keep us keep us happy during the winter months um prickly pear reminds me so much of my oldest son because he loved that movie the jungle book and i know many of you probably know that movie very well it is a sweet sweet movie and my goodness i can just about sing all the songs in there myself because we had to play it so much for him and it reminds me so much of Baloo, you know, the bear in there. He has got such a great attitude about life. And he sings about a prickly pear when he sings about bear necessities. And he says, when you pick a prickly pear and you pick a raw paw, well, next time, beware. Don't pick the prickly pear with a paw. When you pick a pear, try to use the claw. <laughs> and he goes on and on. And it's just a sweet movie. It reminds me of Blake so much. Um... And another thing I wanted to tell y'all, I didn't get to have, see my friend Paula when I was up there. She had had to leave. So I filmed all around the store and everything. But I really want y'all to meet Paula because she's a dear friend of mine. She and I have traveled together. And they're headed off to market to get ready for Christmas. And so I am going to take us back in there. And y'all can see all the beautiful things in there. For Christmas and uh, so we're gonna go back we're gonna take another trip together but um anyway guys I'm gonna get off of here and I love y'all see y'all next time Betty Boop and she cute this is my section guys <laughs> I couldn't wait to get y'all back here all this cast iron I love it love it love it I do I do I do what is this I'm looking at? Hang on. Now, isn't that cute? That's a big old trivet for that cast iron skillet. We must bring that with us. Look at that. Big old wooden thing. I love it. It says Lodge on the back. Yep. That's coming with us. I'm just wanting y'all to see all of the 
Lodge products. It's tons of them. I love them all. I have many pieces. Many, many, many pieces. I do, I do. A griddle. I'm always wagging my griddle back and forth from the house to the canning kitchen. I might have to get one of those too. I sure might. Let's see here. Oh, look at this. The cast iron for a, a cake. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. A butt pan. You know, I bet that'd put a nice crust on a cake. Oh, I like that. Bunches. You see that? It's even got a scrub brush for cleaning. It's got some cleaner. Okay, guys. I know. I know. I'm getting a stuck in the this department <laughs> got mr. turkey hey and y'all were just one of y'all were just talking to me about that I love that I've got several pieces of that now isn't that cute isn't that adorable it's an apple I love that not only do they have work farm clothes but they also have in that a cute little old dressing room <laughs> um, they also have tons of hats and beautiful purses y'all got to see some of these pretty purses so pretty love them isn't that one pretty gorgeous yes yes we can get in there look at there so so pretty they're worth the drive to come up here too. As you see, I've not even shown you all the stuff, but literally you can buy all your Christmas right here. Um, I'm just in the men's department. We've got belts. We've got all kinds of gloves. Aren't those the cutest cactus ever? Yes, they are. Those are the kinds that won't really poke us, huh? But we're going to go find the ones that really poke us. Then you've got women's clothing as well cute 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 things paula um jason's wife my sweet friend she's got cute cute taste and you can tell isn't this adorable oh i love it and look at the little boys <laughs> so sweet so sweet all sorts of western shirts like that then you come into the girls clothing i love this isn't that beautiful jeans dress with some boots just adorable we've got the women's hats lots of women's clothes and shoes caps oh my oh my look at the little baby boots those are precious precious yes they are oh and here's some oh my goodness they have the the little fringe like hanging oh those are adorable so pretty little jeans little shirts and jackets in that a cute shirt and that's that soft fabric that feels so good this is where i bring my grand boys to we shop for their boots in the fall and i love to get them georgia boots i'm just going to show you a few of their boots here those are cute these are adorable Yes, I love to get my grandboys some Georgia boots in the fall. I sure do. Adorable rain boots. Look at those. Look at these with the cacti on them. Feathers. So, so cute. Just tons and tons and tons of boots. As y'all see. Y'all see these boots. John's had those a couple of times, so we hadn't gotten them this time. <laughs> rubber boots and now we're going to head to my favorite section the cooking section yes we are there's even more toys toys for the little ones i love the farm all tractor isn't that cute i know it we've got more jewelry real 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 pretty pieces seeds you got any kind of seed you could possibly want for your gardening y'all know i come here i've got a stack going there 
Aren't they so cute? These are adorable. Are these for sale? Oh my goodness. I might have to take one home. Yes, aren't these cute, guys? Do I want the big one or the little one? Which one do I want? I think you want both. Do I want both? Girl, John might choke me. 